Hi everyone, my name is Katherine Pham and today I will be talking about comparative effectiveness. This presentation was prepared for Professor Alimi's online HAP360 course. We will be going over a mini comparative effectiveness study. To be more specific, the purpose of this presentation is to identify the two patients that could serve as matched controls for the cases. Also to randomly select the possible controls using the lowest random number provided. And finally, to provide a Kaplan-Meier survival plot of patients with no falls. So, let's begin we are going to identify two patients to be matched controls. We are choosing patients 1 and 3, and the next slide will clarify why. Then we are going to match based on the patient's ages. After this, we will choose controls based on the lowest random number. As you can see, here is our given data sample, a screenshot of the chart provided to us. The rows for patient 1 and patient 3 are highlighted in yellow because they were the only patients out of the nine who received intervention for their medical problems. One thing that we must do before anything else is calculate the standard deviation. The standard deviation is a statistical value that can tell us a lot about the data set and it also helps us determine which values are close to the norm and which values are not. The formula for the standard deviation is shown here, where mu is the mean, n is the number of values, and x sub i is the individual values. After plugging in all the numbers, we determined that the standard deviation for the given values is 8.89, so it's almost 9. Now that we have calculated the standard deviation, we can work on selecting controls. How do we select controls? We select them based on the lowest random number, which is the last column in this chart. Patients 2, 8, and 9 are in one group, as their random number values are furthest from the standard deviation. Patients 4, 5, 6, and 7 are in the other group they are closer to the standard deviation. And the lowest random numbers for each case were 8 and 9 and 4 and 6. Now we are trying to create a Kaplan-Meier plot for the cases first. In order to do this we calculate the number of patients at risk of falling and the number of patients that are not at risk of falling. For example, month three, one fall, one without fall. This is a one to two ratio, which translates to 50%. Next, we are going to do the exact same thing that we did in the previous slide, but with the controls this time. The calculations are all the same, but we look at four different cases and you can see the percentages in the last column under percent never fallen. And finally, this is what we came here for, the Kaplan-Meier plot. This is a graphical representation of what we discussed in the last two slides. You can see all the percentages and all the months for each axis. And the darker color is the cases, and the lighter color represents the controls. So take a moment to look at this graph because it represents all of the data that we just analyzed. And in conclusion, Comparative effectiveness is definitely an efficient way to display patterns in healthcare data and in all types of data. Also, using controls is significantly more accurate than going without them.
because they give us an idea of what is normal and what deviates from what is normal. That is all for this presentation. I hope you have a better understanding of comparative effectiveness. Thank you.